God that will just preach on earth. Love is eternal because God is eternal. You shall not fail in life. You shall not fail in health. You shall not fail in business. You shall not fail in the name of Jesus. Praise God, viewers. You are welcome to this very special episode. And we are continuing on the study on love. And like we said sometime, it's the central theme of the gospel of Jesus. Love brought Jesus to seek and to save you. Love is the reason the Father sent his only begotten Son. Love is the reason why Jesus surrendered his own life without hesitation. Love. Love is the reason. Love is at the heart of God at creation. He needed a creature, not an angel, who will be like him, who will share fellowship with him. So he created man. He created you. Sin disrupted that creation. And that's what sin does all the time. It's a disruption to eternal program of God. And that's the reason your life must not harbor sin. But love made God come down to reach you again. So we're studying love exhaustively. The world does not know love. The world knows lust. But Jesus shows us the character of love. And we're continuing on the series on the attitude of love. Attitude is a deep feeling in you that is manifested on your outside. A deep sense of something in you that you are manifesting on the outside. If a man is angry with a wife, there's an attitude developing, forming on the inside, attitude of fighting her, attitude of beating her. And once he comes and manifests that, an attitude has been manifested. Love is heaven's attitude that is displayed on planet Earth. Love. God is love. First John chapter 4 tells us this. If God is love, Jesus is love. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. But the purpose of that love is that you might believe in him and receive a new life because the life we have lived, the life of sin was no good, was taking us to hell and destruction. And God sent Jesus to disrupt that, disrupt the work of the devil. Sin is a disruption to the work of God in your life. The love of God sent Jesus, I mean, brought Jesus to disrupt the work of sin, disrupt the work of the devil, so he will not destroy you in hell. Love is at the heart of God in doing whatever he does. See, the Holy Spirit spreads the love of God in our heart. That's how crucial love is. The Holy Spirit spreads the love of God in our heart. And if you are not living in love, you have lost heaven's identity. Anyone not living in the love of God, a love towards the kingdom of God, and love towards God, love towards his church, love towards the brethren. Anyone not living in this kind of love has lost the identity of heaven. In fact, the Bible says, if you do not love God, you do not know God. So love is the bond of relationship that we enter into when we accept Jesus Christ. If you do not love God, 
you do not know God. Look at what the scripture says. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another. Love is heaven's attitude displayed on earth. Let us love one another. If any home knows love, there will be joy and the peace of God in that home. A home that does not know love, does not know peace. Beloved, he said, let us love one another. For love is of God. Love springs from God. That's his identity. Love is coming from God. And he who loves his fellow man, he who loves his fellow man is begotten or born of God and is coming progressively to know and understand God, to perceive and recognize and get better daily and clearer knowledge of God because of that love relationship. I'm reading from Amplified Version. Now in your journey from planet A to heaven, love is the only reason why you will make heaven. You are outside love, you are outside God. And if you are outside God, you cannot be where God is. You are in love, you are in God. And when you are in God, you will be where God is. There are many other things we do in the Christian faith. But love is the central, central thing. He said, he who does not know, does not love God, has not become acquainted with God, does not know God. And never did know him, for God is love. So the identity of the church must be love. The identity of believers must be love. We cannot live like ordinary men and women in our neighborhood and never influence them for God. We can live the extraordinary life of love, receiving grace from the Father to help us represent Jesus on earth and display the attitude of love. You are welcome to the Orphan Speak segment of our program. Often, we need to understand what God's mind is about orphans. They are the most neglected in certain cultures. Parents die and relations come and some sell the house of their parents, some get away with the properties of their parents and they are left only to their fate. And some of them have ended up in crime, in misadventures and... But some Waga Foundation has a message to relations of orphans and to those who have the capacity to help orphans. I'd like to share with you what God says and what God thinks about orphans. What's God's heart? Early enough in scriptures, even in the Old Testament, God has shown himself what blessings there are for those who pay attention to orphans. Uh, number one, there are three things he mentioned and many more. I can share maybe two, three with you today. Number one, the Lord God himself showed himself as a father of the fatherless. In Psalm chapter 68 verse 5, oh, that's a profound scripture. And I'd like to give you that scripture from the Amplified Version. A father of the fatherless, he calls himself. A judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. But you know, when you read these scriptures, you may not really understand the expressions and the terminologies. Now, what he's saying is, he's not just only a father of the fatherless. One of the things we have heard often in our interview say again and again, their securities were gone. Just when they discovered they've lost their father and sometimes, most of the time, both parents. 
certainty was gone. Uncertainty set into their lives. But the Bible says God calls himself a protector. Both for the orphans and the widows. Amplified version of Psalm 68 verse 5. That's the reason Samaga Foundation is in the business of giving a hope, a help, and a future to orphans in training them through a university education. It's an expensive thing to do, but God is helping us. Because, number one, in our interview with orphans, we discover they are often the most abandoned people. When their parents are gone, everybody seems to go their way. Everybody, including those who, who were benefactors of their parents' legacy, they go their way. And they leave these children to their faith. They leave these children to whatever it is that happened to, to them. Thank God for a few, a few relations in our culture, very few relations who take time to take care of orphans, who lose their parents. The mission in the hand of Samaga Foundation is to give them a hope. That all hope is now gone. To give them a help. Take the place of what their father or their parents should have done in their lives. And do it. Pay their fee. And help them to graduate from university and have a foundation for a future. Now, his name is a father of orphans. Another translation says it's a champion of orphans and champion of widows. He makes family for orphans. He said he takes the solitude, the desolate, and bring them into a family. Well, what a joy, again, that they discover that they can have a family again. And in Samaga Foundation, we are making a family out of the orphans that God is helping us to take care of. That's the mission we are sent to. The heart of God is for the fatherless. And when you open your heart to take care of the fatherless, there are special blessings that God reserves for you. When you open your heart to take care of orphans, there are about 17.5 million orphans in this country alone as of December 2017. Many more have been created by the beastly actions of insurgents and untimely death out of sicknesses and diseases. But the heart of God is for the fatherless. And when your heart turns to taking care of the fatherless, Oh God, you, 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 you touch something in the heart of the Lord. You touch something. And number two, God is called the helper for the fatherless. So each time you help orphans, you are doing what God loves. Each time you help orphans. When you love what God loves, you do what God loves, he responds to you in blessing. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18, he said, He doth execute judgment for the fatherless. He doth execute judgment for the fatherless and the widows. And he loveth the strangers in giving food and remnant. Let me share something from that thought. The Lord insists that we treat orphans and widows with love and compassion. It's, it's costly sometimes to do that. It is. But that's the love and compassion. Something is leaving you towards them. That's the love and compassion. The society exploits orphans. And sometimes even widows. But God wants us to reach out to them and help them. And as you do, the Lord will bless you. I'll give you one more thought about what God thinks about orphans. In God's assessment of you, both now and eternal assessment of you, he considers 
how you stood with orphans, doing good to orphans is the right thing to do. That's God's assessment. Now, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17, he said, you must go all out to help orphans and widows. Stand out for them. Show direct care for them. And it pleases the heart of God. When you love what God loves, God will place you in a place of opportunities and his blessings. That's why Samaga Foundation is all out to give them help, a hope, and a future. When you give anybody education, you have given them the foundation for a glorious future. And that's what we busy ourselves doing. To give every one of them a strong foundation for a glorious future. You can be part of this God-ordained God favored mission. You can be part of their lives. You can be part of their lives. The media team will give you a link, give you that will help you to be part of their lives. But let, let's allow orphans to speak and encourage other orphans out there. So many of them are desperate. Some are giving up on life. Some are committing suicide. But we can help. We can help. And as you do, the Lord bless you as you do. Check out the link that the media team are putting there for you right now. And choose the kind of options you want to choose to be part of the life of these orphans. And as, you, as they speak to the heart of the other orphans, and as you hear them speak, as your heart vibrates towards helping them, the Lord God will help you in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you stand up for orphans. Now orphans speak. Now, the, this segment is the orphan speak segment of our program. And like I said, over 17.5 million by December 2017, there are more now. Um, with me on the set today is Pere Kubo. The name is a long one. Now, Pere, what's, what was your, I actually call her Sonia. What was your candid experience when you discovered your parents are gone? Um, I felt abandoned, dejected. I felt like my whole world had crashed down because there was nobody that I could turn to, no one that I could turn to for, for, for help. I was just there and it was really one that was really, really terrible. It was really, really terrible. Now, so at that moment, how did you feel? I felt so... I was, I was actually traumatized at that point. <laughs> Because knowing fully well that there's nobody you could turn to for help, I felt really dejected, <laughs> abandoned. Now, what did that experience do to you? I, I listened to one of the orphans. He said that at a point she wanted to go stand on the road and the car just overrun her. What, what did that experience do to you? When I found out that my, I had lost my mom at that point, Truth is, I left the hospital and I, at that point, I just wanted to just die. Because knowing fully well that I had siblings and just nobody that I could literally turn to. That no dad, no mom, no one to turn to for help. And now the siblings at that time will be looking onto the young girl for help. So you suddenly became a mother too at a tender age. Now, let me ask this question. How did life treat you within that period? It really, really hard. It was terrible. Because we literally need to go out there, look for something to do so you could put food on the table for your siblings and yourself. It wasn't easy at all. 
it was it was really really hard and terrible it was an experience that i I, 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 I felt I couldn't even come out of it at that point. Did you, at any point in time during this period, lose hope of a glorious future? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I felt like I don't even have a future anymore because clearly you could see that there's nobody that would help. There was no uncles, nobody that I felt like would help me. So at that point, I just felt like everything was just gone. All the hope, everything was gone. I lost hope, complete hope. I lost it. Then God sent in Samaga Foundation as an intervention for you. A Samaga Foundation is committed to giving hope to orphans because hope was taken away from them at the death of their parents. Samaga Foundation is committed to giving a help to orphans. We are committed to this as a mission in life. Because help, those who were to help them, have gone from them untimely. Samaka Foundation is committed, determined by the grace of God to give them an educational foundation that will be the foundation of their glorious future. Now, in your own experience, when you got your letter of full scholarship for university education from Samaga Foundation, speak to the issue of hope. My hope came back alive when mm -hmm. I got my letter of full scholarship. All along you've been speaking, you didn't smile. Now you're, you're smiling. Yeah, right. Go ahead. I was so, so happy when I got that letter. I felt like, oh my God, I now have a glorious future and I have something that I really, really hope for. And that's glorious. And today you are a graduate. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? And um, when you got your letter of full scholarship from Samaga Foundation, speak to the issue of help. Now, I was given, I was, my tuition fee was paid for in full. My um, um, place that I would stay was paid for in full. I didn't really need to think of how to pay for my school fees, pay for the place that I would stay. Everything was paid for in full. Help came in full. That's amazing. Uh, you see, Samaka Foundation is on a rescue mission. Because except some of these orphans are rescued, the society will take advantage of them. Except some of them are rescued, some of them will end up as destitutes in crime and we've had numerous stories about this some have ended up confused and depressed desolate because all hope was taken when they lost their parents now what encouragement do you have for other orphans going through what you just came through I just want to encourage every orphan out there, please do not be discouraged. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 and from verse 10, it said, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will be with you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. If God could locate me and turn my life around, then he can also locate you and turn your life around. Don't just give up hope. Believe in him and trust in him. He will definitely come. Well, that's amazing. You're now a preacher. Right. Now, congratulations, Pere. Um, and I pray for a glorious future for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And for the, all the orphans out there, Samaga Foundation may not be able to help everyone. But we're committed to help at least train one million orphans over the next decade. And we trust God that you will keep your faith. We will trust God you will not be lost in the society. It could be cruel. It could be dejecting. But as you keep your faith strong in the Lord, he will locate you. And God bless you. I'd like to pray for you. Don't be too big today to receive the love of Jesus. Because that's where condemnation is, refusing to accept the love of Jesus. God is not interested in throwing you in hell. He's not. 
It's when you receive the life of Jesus that the things you are battling with, the sins you are battling with, will begin to vanish from your life because the life of Jesus has come in. The Holy Ghost is helping you to overcome them. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life today. I receive your love. I enter into a new relationship with you, Jesus. I declare Jesus as the Lord of my life. And today I am born again. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations if you have done that. I want you to get a copy of your Bible by yourself. Get a Bible. And begin to read the scripture page by page from Matthew to Revelation. When you come to the book of John, read that book two times or three times. There's so much in the book of John you need to know about the love of God. And continue to read the other books until you finish the New Testament. When you come to the book of Revelation, you may be, you may be Scared the first time. It happened to me in 1972. I was scared reading the book of Revelation, but I needed to know the word, so I read it. But the second time I was going through the, the, the whole of New Testament, I came back to the book of Revelation. Yes, I was still a little scared, but not as, as at the first time. Who are these horses? Who, who are these things that the Bible is talking about? Now, the picture of the end times and things that are going to happen and things that will come. Now, you may not understand everything now, but just keep reading. Just keep reading. Just keep reading. Don't open your Bible today and say, eh, God, what do you have for me? No, chapter by chapter. If you can take it two chapters every day and you spend some time to worship God and pray, you are going to be a fast-growing Christian. Give our counseling pastors a call. They are waiting for you. And if you have any prayer point, any circumstance troubling you, send your prayer point. We like to pray for you and pray with you. Your prayer point to Prayer at sammagaminsis.org. We are going to pray for you. We like to pray for you. We want to hear from you. And God has done something for you. Testimonies in your life already? Send your testimonies now to testimonies at sammagaminsis.org. We are going to rejoice with you. We are going to pray for your testimonies to be permanent. That's why we are here. To service you in the name of Jesus. Salem University is admitting students for 2022-2023 session. In Salem University, law is fully accredited. In Salem University, all programs are fully accredited. Salem University is my choice. In Salem University, you must study hard and you graduate just on time. Salem University, a place to be. Salem University is admitting now for 2022-2023 session. Rush now for your space. Log on to www.salemuniversity.edu.ng. Contact us with any of the following numbers. 0806-299-8729 or... 0810-001-0070 Salem University Raising Global Leaders
that you were blessed by this message. For the continuation of this message, join us on all our social media platforms, same time, tomorrow. God.